Ah, uh, the new phone has very high definition. Great. Great. Time for a garden tour. And I already shot one, but you know what? I switched my phone and it was a whole nightmare. So now it's been like a week and it was super out of date. So let's do another one. So here is the grand sweep. <laughs> Just old man greetings over there. Gotta shout because they can't hear so good. Here is the cut flower garden, which is becoming uh, very cottage, very cottage garden, but that's completely okay with me. Um, I think I may come in here and pull out the alyssum soon and plant something else here. I may, I don't know, maybe throw some more zinnias or something a little shorter in here. You know what? I may put, I may put a squash there and let it trail over the grass. Who knows? I don't know. Snap dragons are popping like crazy right now. I got a lot of yellows, but I did get some interesting color variations, so I'll show those to you. There is some yarrow right there, which is a perennial. I did plan to keep this as a annual garden, but I may pop some perennials in. Maybe every year I won't feel like starting 500 trays of annuals. I got this at a nursery that I went to for the first time the other day. It was really cool. There's the foxglove back there. Some more snapdragons. That one back there is really beautiful. And the marigolds are still going. Just trying to come in and deadhead them, which I've noticed does help them put out more blooms and it just keeps them you know, looking nice. So I've got some zinnias back here and the earwigs have showed up. Um, they were a huge problem last year and I'll show you later what they did to my purchased zinnias. So we got some more snaps here. I definitely went a little crazy with the snapdragon planting, um, but I, they looked so sickly when I put them in the ground that I didn't even think they would make it. So they did. Bachelor buttons are looking beautiful. These are the black gem variety. I believe I got those from Fedco Seeds. And my straw flowers that I was not sure if they were going to make it, but they have made it. And they are beautiful and always covered in ants, but I haven't seen a lot of aphids, so I think they may just still be cleaning up on some honeydew left over from the aphid infestation. I do still see one. Ugh, I hate these things. They suck. I know they serve a purpose in nature, but God, does there have to be so many in my garden in particular? That is probably my favorite snapdragon plant that's come up so far. It has this incredible color. It's like a sunset. I just love it so much. And then we got a lot of white ones over here. So we've got a lot of yellow over there and a lot of white over here. So this alyssum over here looks a little better than the alyssum over there. So I may pull some of it from here to add in some zinnias and then just leave a little bit in between because I do like how it looks and the pollinators definitely like it. There are constantly tons of hoverflies and native bees around here. Everybody puts a lot of focus on the honeybee, but the honeybee is actually not native to North America. And while it is an, a wonderful pollinator, it is far from the only one that we should be concerned about. So that makes me happy when I see a lot of the native ones around my garden. And can we just like bask in this for a minute here? This view is pretty sweet. <laughs> I think I'm going to start uh, opening my photography business back up and see if I can do some garden portraits. I'll just keep my distance. So these are the painted daisies. And they are so cool. Each one's just a little bit different. 
I just have this one orange and yellow plant, interestingly enough. So if you've noticed the camera frame changed up, I did get a new phone. I'm on an iPhone 11 with a wide angle. Oh, it's so cool. This is the uh, regular frame here. <laughs> and the wide. So here's where the uh, problem free zone stops because I have a tuber dahlia in here that's being engulfed in um, this mix pack here of bachelor buttons. So I need to come in and sort of stake this away from that plant and see if that will give it enough light to uh, get going because I'd hate to pull the nasturtiums out. This was a mix pack of bachelor buttons and I think these still might be the black gems that got mixed in. Again, label your stuff really good, guys. <laughs> you will forget. The seed dahlias are so great. I'm having a great time watching these come up. I probably could have spaced them out just a bit more. But this is my first time. This one's dying off. I really like the white ones, though. That one. And then this one is a tuber dahlia. So you can see how much bigger this got. We'll have separate little flowers here. I didn't prune or pinch this one at all because I, I wasn't really sure about doing that, so I just didn't. Garden gurus on YouTube say they have teaching gardens. Mine is a learning garden. So these are gladiolas that I assume will bloom at some point. These are two more tuber dahlias that are really just starting to take off, so um, they've just, they've kind of lagged behind. I planted them just after this one. Oh, that was the one that had already had a sprout on it when I planted it, so I guess it's just a head. And more seed dahlias over there. If anyone knows a lot about dahlias, hit me up because I don't know shit. So uh, the delphinium has started growing like crazy in the last week, so that's kind of exciting because it wasn't doing a whole lot for quite a while. There's some zinnias that I started from seed. I put these in a couple weeks ago and they're really starting to take off too. This basil has just uh, never really been happy since I put it in. I think it just wasn't warm enough when I put it in and I may have like stunted it a bit. The one over there is doing better. And that's just more yarrow. You can see it fell over overnight so the flowers turned. <laughs> Lots of petunias at the end here. These are another thing I may pull out at some point to put something else in, maybe like a watermelon or something. I may train it to go up an arch if I could get my hands on one. I'm hoping to get some cattle panel trellises going here. And coming off the bed over there, hopefully soon, hopefully. So I've got another straw flower here. And then I believe that over there is Sweet William. I think I thought that it was more of this, but it, it's, it's very clearly not that plant, and I'm pretty sure that's the sweet william that I planted. And right here are some columbines that are, you know, not doing much, so I'm just kind of planting around them, and I think that they will come back next year, and uh, that's when we'll get to see what they're made out of. Something is clearly having a feast on my nasturtium over there. I just realized I shot the first half of this video in a very low frame rate, so let's hope it doesn't look like total garbage. I really like how the nasturtiums look just woven in the garden bed. I know in the, in the western part of the country they're basically weeds, but I'm still quite charmed by them. And then here is the daisy patch that just comes up in my yard if I don't mow, so I'm very glad we decided to leave a little patch of these. It looks like they're starting to decline, so I'll probably whack that down at some point, but it's been nice to have it. It really added to the cut flower gardenness of the cut flower garden. I'm pretty excited that the dill is about to flower. It's quite popular with the pollinators, and my cilantro has also flowered, so I'm just leaving that there for them little thyme flowers here. 
This, uh, this bed may end up actually dismantle this a little bit and move these herbs up to my window box up there and then maybe plant this bed here with something else that's like edible because I'm going to need the space because I started more seeds and I'm just, nobody was here to stop me. So you saw me build this in the last vlog and look at it now. So that is my first spaghetti squash. Pardon me, sir. That's my first spaghetti squash. I hand pollinated that bitch and I'm very proud of it as if I made it, as if I conceived it myself, because I kind of did. Um, these leaves are looking super healthy. I thought that those silvery spots were powdery mildew, but they're actually not. Um, I think that's just how the leaves look, because I've seen them like this in a lot of people's videos. So if you know what that is, please tell me, because um, I haven't had time to Google it yet. <laughs> Let's see how it's like. It's like silvery. And it kind of looks like part of the plant, but I don't know. All these leaves look very green. I just removed a couple of crappy looking ones yesterday that sort of looked like that. You know, so I'll probably take this one off at some point too, but I don't want to leave a lot of open wounds for the bugs to smell right now. Um, I'm going to pick up some peppermint oil to ward those bitches off. So I'll go around back here to show you these beefy and one skimpy tomato plant. So I believe this one is the homestead. And it's looking pretty good. I'm definitely, as you can see, dealing with aphids and it's very irritating. So what we've been doing is murdering them. Fuck you. So I spent my morning out here squashing them with my hands. Um, I do need to spray. And because I don't want to kill any good bugs, I have to do it in the evening. And um, usually I'm very tired by then. So I just haven't done it yet. I also plan to try some hydrogen peroxide preventative spraying to ward off the inevitable early blight, which unfortunately is a thing in New England. So this guy, um is definitely having some leaf curl issues because it doesn't look sick or bad this looks like uh environmental stress and i know it's not dry so fucking aphid so i think that that might just be a little bit of it being a diva you bitch so the struggly one is the green zebra this meaty big boy right here is a Ten Fingers of Naples, which is a paste tomato. And I have two of these plants. I wanted to make sure that I had a good amount of these because these are the best for canning. And I'm learning to do that this year. And I wanted to have, you know, just like a good paste tomato for that. So fingers crossed this baby stays as happy as it is. It is such a burly gnarly mess up here but it looks okay and then this is the homestead tomato uh, this seed came from Zella Jake farms on Etsy which is um, I've had really good experiences with have some Thai basil under here and also under there so here here's where I fucked up okay I, I put my sweet pepper plants in the middle here and uh, they did not like that. They didn't like that. Uh, this one, this one looks like shit. I think it's dying. It's not getting any sun. It's probably being strangled at the root. Uh, same, that one is starting to decline in the same way. So that's kind of a bummer. I do have one more sweet pepper plant over there that seems to be doing well. So hopefully, hopefully I get at least one sweet pepper plant instead of, you know, just 800 super hot pepper ones. Anyway, back over here. This is some arugula, which I'm hoping the aphids are leaving alone. And the answer to that is no, never. They'll never leave it. Oh, no, that's not an aphid. Okay, great. And this is like a very spicy arugula. It's very good. And then, God, I think this is 
I don't remember which one this was. I thought it was Black Seeded Simpson, but I, I can't really honestly remember what I planted there. So I was just going to harvest these as baby greens as well. So I'll probably harvest these in the morning when they're nice and, you know, sweet and taut. Uh, what's the word Scott always uses? Turgid. When the, when the leaves are nice and turgid. The leaf turgidity. Okay. So right here I have some scarlet runner beans and um, I was hoping to already have the cattle panel arch that was going to go here, uh, which would hopefully also host a melon plant of some kind. I was going to extend this out just a little bit, enough to make some room for a melon. Um, but I haven't gotten that yet, so hopefully this weekend, hopefully. They're sold out locally, so I have to travel to get them. Okay, and rounding back. Spent a lot of time this morning picking aphids off of this baby, but she's looking okay. This is the world's smallest tomato, and this groups up like a cherry, as you can see. Squish, squish, and they get not much bigger than this. So I'm pretty excited to have those. They seem like something very easy to throw into, you know, like a, like a breakfast or a salad. And then I just have some of your standard... Uh, is it Genovese? I'm not really sure how to say that. Genovese basil. Your normal basil. Your standard basil. And these are suckers. I'm just going to pick those off. This is my honey drop cherry tomato. This is a fruition seeds variety. I don't think I'm going to get this one again next year. This one hasn't done so great for me. But it is doing much better this year, and it did get a late start, so I'm not going to make that decision just yet. This is my Dancing with Smurfs Cherry Tomato. This is also from Fruition Seeds, and this variety I like a little bit more. Again, I think this is a environmental issue, or perhaps a re reaction to these little fuckers. This makes really, really purple cherry tomatoes. They're super pretty and they taste really good. So I'm excited to grow this again this year. I've got a neighbor over there, so sorry if I'm whispering, I feel weird. Um, this is my tomatillo, and this is a purple tomatillo. I am having some issues with cucumber beetles on this thing. Um, I find them fornicating. Oh, you know what? There's one right there. There you go, you little bitch. Right there. That is a cucumber beetle. If you see them, you need to murder them. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Murder bucket, murder bucket, murder bucket. No fornicating on my plant, sir. So you just wanna keep an eye out for orange clusters of eggs because that's what their eggs look like and I found some this morning and dispatched them into the murder bucket so hopefully I can keep on top of the population I don't care you know if they get a few of my leaves I just don't want them to destroy the whole crop and yeah, it's more basil I've also got onions kind of growing in all of my pots in an attempt to ward off pestiferous fuck faces like the cucumber beetle. Here is one of my mystery hot peppers. So if we got any spicy boys out there, or spicy gals, do tell me if you know what this is. Seems to be darkening here. It's definitely too chubby, too swole to be a jalapeno. We're all very impressed, sir. And then I've got this fun little pepper that's getting some kind of darker markings on it. This is another mystery pepper, and this is actually two plants. So I am not sure what these are yet. Same for this one. Not sure what this is yet. However, this one is a Czech black pepper. I did figure that out from the list of the seeds that were mixed up for the mix pack that I got. That was the only purple one and it looks just like it. So 
we've got one ID'd. And this is a cayenne. So I'm just waiting on these to redden up. Uh, so if you have uh, hot pepper recipes, I'm gonna drop them down below. Your girl's gonna need a lot of them, like seriously. Those two smaller guys over there were some languishing starts that I had up on the porch that I honestly planned to compost because I just didn't think I had enough room for them. But I dug out these buckets and scraped together some more pennies for potting mix. And uh, here we are with more peppers. Here is the sweet 100 that is looking pretty curly and bummed out. And this one looks a little sick. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on with this guy, but it is growing very quickly. So we will find out. Actually, oh, look at the aphids, man. Actually, the way this leaf looks makes me think I'm not gonna touch any more plants with this hand just in case. Because with the leaf modeling, uh, that doesn't look like mosaic, but it also kind of does. Oh man. Move this thing away from my other plants and I'm gonna go wash my hands before I touch anything else. And this is a ghost pepper and a ghost pepper and a chocolate habanero. I just transferred these out. I'm gonna go wash my hands while the neighbors are out. I swear every time I try to film anything out in the garden, the neighbors come out immediately. I think they're just like trying to ruin it for me. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing. And this seems like a good time to point out if you outdoor garden and even if you're just outside touching plants when you're out walking and stuff, make sure that you wash your hands. And we in America have a terrible habit of wearing our shoes in the house. And if you have house plants you care about, it might not be the best idea. I'm just saying. So we're gonna move that in a little while. So for a little bit, I thought that this was a different variety than it is, but this is actually, you can see, the longer tomato coming out. That's a uh, 10 fingers of Naples. That's one of the paste tomatoes, as is that one. So I should have three of those actually, not two, like I said earlier. Don't listen to me. Here is a Cherokee purple that I think will be my first ripe, bigger tomato. Got some more purple basil over there that's starting to perk up a little bit, and then onions all throughout this bed. These are the last two heads of lettuce I have in this bed. Um, I'll probably harvest these tomorrow morning with the other greens and just get them out because it's starting to get hot. My peas are popping right now. I think that pretty soon, you can actually see a pretty pretty swollen pod right there. I probably should have picked that already. These um, will probably start to decline pretty soon because these are a cool weather crop. So this last round of picking these off should probably be the last. And then I will probably pull those out. And then there's just a sunflower in the middle. So I have a couple sunflowers here and I may plant maybe one more here and then give this area a little bit of shade for um, some greens later in the season. Probably some chard, because that can take a bit of heat. And here's my sweet pepper that uh, is also starting to look real sad. So I'm gonna have to look this up because this plant, these plants are telling me something and I'm not sure what it is. They look like they may need some CalMag. So I may try that because I know that they are definite oh look at mother another bucket damn it it flew away and then more ground cherries uh aka cucumber beetle bath houses and here are the eggs you see that gonna get rid of that no but found some ground cherries so these fall off and they ripen on the ground so you want to snap those up before any critters do and you don't want to pull them off they'll just fall off on their own see there's another one down there so right here is a little radish I just tucked in there. 
it, it's doing okay. There is nothing in this square right now. The carrots are finally starting to come up. I have never successfully grown carrots. I'm pretty excited about that. Same for beets, and the beets are starting to come up too. I heard that these are, take a little while to get established, but once they go, they go. So that's exciting. They are prolific fornicators. This one's probably a nice end wrap. They taste like pineapple. Oh, so good. This, I believe, is a Velvet Queen Sunflower. And she is ready to pop. This is pretty chunky. I usually pick them right about here. And they're so good raw in salad or in stir fries. Have to come pick some of them today. Here's one of my zinnias. I planted these from seed. I think these are the fruition seed variety. So we'll be able to tell when they bloom a little more. Here is the zinnias that I purchased. And then I purchased these that this hookara with bird poop in it that I planted those coleus seeds and then I purchased that variegated oregano there. So for the most part my garden is entirely from seed but I did have to buy a few things. I mean come on. And then before we depart the edibles this is the volunteer I think it's a cucumber plant uh, it is riddled with flea beetles so I need to spray this tonight as well um, these squash and cucumber look you can see them you see it I'm pretty sure those are flea beetles so I am going to spray the hell out of this later with some neem oil and hopefully that works because um, that's all I have on me and I'm tired of purchasing things so I'm not gonna buy anything else popped a couple delicata squash seeds in here but they have not come up yet so I might start some in the house I hate starting stuff outside it takes forever so here is the back mostly perennial bed do have some annuals obviously a lot of the stuff in bloom right now are annuals so obviously we have some snapdragons all through here and here a lot of the dwarf variety and then these are the tall varieties we've got some sunflowers that are putting on about six inches to a foot of growth a day at this point um, an ailing tomato plant that i just didn't have the heart to compost i just sort of threw it over there and it actually is still growing so i'm just kind of letting nature handle that one and i did see some ladybugs on it the other day so you know nature works i've got some chives here that is um, blue mist flower that I need to put in the ground. This is lovage, which is an herb that tastes like celery and apparently gets about 10 feet tall, which I did not know, but I went to see Julie from Farm Coast Houseplants on Instagram and um, she has it and it's taller than me. And I had to ask her what it was and when she told me, I was like, oh no, what have I done? Gotta couple kinds of thyme over here. I'll probably come to regret putting those there eventually as they become a giant bush like the one over there, but that's okay. Here are some more zinnias. I'm getting a little eaten, but it's all right. What is that? Is that an earwig? Yep. Told ya. These forking earwigs. See them? Just in there eating my plant. Mother. I have noticed that your wigs become quite an issue with wood mulch and um, that is something I'm probably not going to do anymore. The straw mulch is kind of a pain because little blades of wheatgrass grow out of it but uh, it's really easy to pull and then they go away forever. So I've got some cone flowers from Mike's parents here. Gladiola I think possibly a different bulb. I don't know. I, I threw some bulbs from Aldi in here and I didn't mark them. It's a running theme, if you've noticed. Milkweed. I don't remember. I think this is the whorled, whorled milkweed. 
I have some comfrey here I need to plant. A little blueberry bush there. Someone pointed out that I should have put that in a pot because it would be easier to maintain the soil uh, acidity that it needs. And, and they are absolutely correct. Um, I did just throw it in the ground because blueberries are, um, a lot of varieties are native here because we have very acidic oil, um, soil. We have very acidic oil. A lot of blueberries are native here because we have extremely acidic soil in New England, especially in my part of New England. So um, that's why I popped them in the dirt. And uh, I may regret that. She may be right, but uh, I figured, fuck it. Everybody else has them in the dirt around here. Why can't I? Although it's such a small one, I probably should have kept it in a pot until it got bigger. It's okay. We can put them in a pot later, right? Here is one of the milk jug perennials. This is the verbena, and it's just starting to bloom. Ailing tomato plant. Actually, I should trim these off. If you have tomato plants with leaves touching the ground, you're going to want to get rid of those just because the splash back from the dirt will bring disease. These are autumn beauties. You can see how big they are. Like this is my this is my chest level here. I saw a really creepy fly on here earlier, which is some kind of fruit fly that I should have killed, but it looked so cool that I was just like, oh, I'm going to go look it up and then looked it up and it's a it's a bastard fly here's a weed uh i need, I need to pull that I don't, I don't know what it is it looks deceptively like something that's not a weed so i didn't pull it right away but it's weed well one of these is a rudbeckia one of them is a maximilis sunflower i don't know which one is which and then i've got two lavender varieties on either side there so yeah that's the that's the perennial flowers and herbs so far. And then I'll just give you a quick sweep of this back shade garden. It's also very weedy. It's getting hot, so I'm less enticed to come out here and pick weeds out for hours. I will eventually straw this bed this week, and then that will help a little bit with the weeds, except for those blades of grass. But they're actually kind of satisfying to pull out because they come out all at once. Oh, it's so good. Day lily. The poppies are done blooming for the season, so we just have these wacky looking seed pods. Some weedy lemon balm there, more parsley. This is a really cool hookara or uh, coral bells. It's just a proven winner's plant right there. And then this guy right here is one of those. And then I also got some sweet woodruff right here. And a big old bulb came out of the middle of it. <laughs> Tons of lemon balm and mint over here. I'm gonna come cut that back so that it doesn't flower and seed all over the place. We have enough. We have enough. And then these here are Mexican sunflowers. Over there and over there, and they got so tall this year, I can't wait to see them. And then this is just a little wildflower patch that I was leaving for pollinators. And it's just starting to sprout up all these little wildflowers. I think that might be upright bindweed, <laughs> not too sure. But this is eventually gonna get mowed, but for now I wanted to leave it up. Can't hurt, right? And there's the accidental tomatillo that I thought was a sunflower, but is it is a tomatillo. <laughs> a couple more milk jug plants I gotta put in the ground. There's some milkweed and then this is the showy goldenrod. I know this gets a little crazy, so I gotta put that somewhere else. I may clean up and dig out some of this back here for some more of these wacky plants to uh, replace the annoying, invasive, wacky plants that are over here. Like, what the f*** is that? Like, what even is that? I try to beat that back every year, and every year it comes back. What is that? I hope it's at least useful, because it's, it's huge. Okay, so that is the big garden, and real quick, I'll show you what the front's looking like right now. And the herb garden that I built in the back for when we put the grill out there, just in case you need some herbs. Just my excuse to buy and plant more herbs. So, 
have to move Buddha over there because he got a bit crowded out. I'm just letting that oxalis grow back there because it doesn't bother me. Here is some um, hosta. And the milkweed has grown like crazy. Oh, look at that little purple thing. I don't know what that guy is, but it's very shy and won't let me take a picture of it. Oh, look at it. What is that? It's got like purple and red wings. Lots of bugs eat milkweed, so um, if this gets chewed down to a nub, then that's what happens. <laughs> that's what it's there for. So I'm hoping to see some monarchs this year. I've only seen one. I'm not even totally sold that it was a monarch because I couldn't get too close to it. The salvia came up nice. And then the earwigs are making a snack of my variegated nasturtium and my uh, zinnias that I purchased. So that's a bummer. Also a lot of this stuff as well. I hate them. They are hideous monsters and I don't care what they do for the earth. They suck. The daylilies are just about to bloom and they are super tall. I had to put a little cage around them just to keep them from smothering out everything down here. That's a, that's a mint plant we're just letting exist. Come to regret that later. Some more really pretty Rudbeckia, I think, right there. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. More bulbs. And then that, that one survived a little bit so far, but not much. So yeah, that's the front garden. It's coming along. It's coming along okay. So these little pots of flowers are starting to get a little straggly and unattractive, even though they have a crazy amount of blooms. They're just sort of messy looking, so I may dismantle and repot those for summer with some marigolds or something. Now this little, these little shade beds I put by the shed are doing okay. Got those hostas from Mike's parents too. Oh, and you come out to my pretty ugly backyard for now. Uh, this is this year's little backyard container garden. This is where I had my whole garden last year. Some of these were purchased, so I got some chocolate mint. I had trouble starting mint from seed. They just didn't produce a whole lot. So I just bought some, and same with rosemary. This is catnip, stevia, uh, oregano, yes. And this is a hot and spicy, a hot and spicy variety of oregano. This is pineapple sage, some parsley, because mine didn't really do too well, so I went and bought some. Hopefully this will hang with the heat coming. This is pineapple mint, and you want to keep your mints in their own container. You don't want to mix them or they'll just taste the same. This is some rosemary from Mike's mom, and some chives, some ailing Thai basil, and some kind of uh, nibbled kale. Sir, sir. Yeah, yeah, so that's just a little, little container herb garden to have out back. We are eventually going to put a grill out here and clean up this back area. It just, it just looks like a grimy city backyard back here, and I hate it. And I also hate all of this. So all of this needs to go away. I need to wash the fence and um, yeah, it's a whole bunch of shit I don't want to do. So that's that's a maybe a fall project because <laughs> realistically I'm too busy with that. So that's it my friends. All the neighborhood children are coming out to yell now. So I'm going to go in the house and shower all the sweat off of myself and uh, enjoy the uh, cool fan in my home because it's muggy as hell out right now. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.